down to the final race. Race number 11, winner takes all. Last race we had to handle it, the race before that we had to handle it. So just no matter what, handle that adversity, come together as a team, and we'll come out with a victory. The team that gets their athlete there first is the team that stands to win everything and move on. It'll be Rape versus Nichols. Here we go. This is where it comes down. Unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. It's about to be official. The first ever match of the MPGL is in the books. The New York Rhinos have just made history. It was very exciting for me, knowing like I just made history. And not only did I make history, but I made it in Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden is like the top line for basketball players, like just to be in that arena, playing that arena. Hi gone to games at Madison Square Garden before and never in my life did I think that I would be competing there. So that was a very, very cool experience for me. People kind of drew to our team because they saw how strong we were. They understood like the New York Rhinos is a force to be reckoned with. And I felt like going into the Miami match, um, we were picked the favorite. The Miami Surge at home against the New York Rhinos. Both of these teams began their seasons with victories. has already thrown their challenge flag. We're gonna have to see what that challenge is exactly. It's a scary concept because if your challenge gets accepted, then you keep your flag. If it doesn't, you lose your flag. So I was like, I better be damn sure that it's a good challenge when I do throw my flag. We may not have seen the last appeal from him tonight. 
The Miami match was really tough. It was, uh, it was hard to watch. Some races we were just excitement, yeah, we got them, we stuck it to them, we got this race. And then some races it was like, golly, they're not making the calls that they're supposed to be making. And Easy came up to us at the very beginning and was like, okay guys, this is what's happening. The standards were so strict, they were so unrealistic that it was hard to satisfy them. Onto the second grid for the Rhinos, Ron Matthews, an over 40 athlete. They were no rep repping him over and over, and the commentaries were like, you know, Ron Matthews slow again on the burpee broad jump. Yeah, Ron Matthews gassed there, kicked the box as uh, they got a little bit out of alignment for him. I want to go over to that booth, you know, I want to go talk to those guys. They, none of our teammates have ever let us down. Because it's different watching somebody who's tired and can't lift a heavy weight or can't do a certain body weight movement than watching somebody doing it correctly and doing it fine, but getting no rep. I mean, we felt like we were going against, it was like six on five. You see the two main judges looking at us, and then we have a, like a line judge and a line judge looking at us, and then they have one judge staring at them. And New York is challenged again. I think Ian Berger, we saw Ian Berger make copious use of that challenge flag. I think I threw the flag four times. There was a combination of things going on. I drank a lot of pre-workout, so caffeine was flowing through my blood. There was also a little bit of history between myself and the Miami coach. They are challenging action in the fourth quadrant. So all the caffeine flowing, the bad calls, it was a perfect storm. I was ready to go. Challenge on the hang cleans by Cassidy Lance in quadrant four, overruled. Overruled. So Berger has lost the red flag for the night. I knew that no matter what, most people on whoever was watching was going to judge. Like, he's fighting again. Well, there's great respect between these athletes, but uh, as long as we're keeping score, we might as well win. It was like athletes' heads were spinning, people were frustrated and mad. I think the first New York Rhino players ever were the perfect example of what it means to be a Rhino. I mean, in situations like that, I want the philosophy of the New York Rhinos to be to keep charging, to never stop, play hard no matter what. came to the locker room, and I just told everyone, we're gonna win this next race. Let's go to the next race. We lose that one, let's move to the next race. We win this race, forget about it, it's over, let's move to the next race. We're not gonna leave it up to the judges, we're not gonna leave it up to the other team. If we're gonna win, let's enjoy ourselves. Race. We fought hard. We are trying to be the first team to put together back-to-back -to -back race wins tonight. And they look as if they're going to even this thing up. It's a race to the finish. Who won it? And we kept fighting the whole match. We never laid down for one second.
think it's on channel 42. On channel 42? Yeah. Can you leave it open? Yeah, just leave it like that. We put them all out. You went crazy today. I'm gonna have a hard time just deciding. We gotta decide which ones we're gonna wear tomorrow. You know what? I should like flip a coin. Come in. Come in. Uh oh. Uh oh. Come on. The sock party. Yeah. Yes. It's intense. It's like the new shirt. It's like everybody's excited over different shirts. Right. It's like, oh, I got this shirt from this gym. I got this shirt from this gym. So now it's like. I got these sweet socks, dude. Woo! This is serious. Bed full of socks. Sock ain't crazy. Everything goes back to what we're used to doing. Our college basketball, before every game, we had this back room. And it was like, you got an extra jersey, you got extra headbands, you got extra socks, you got extra compression shorts. Just, I mean, the whole nine back there. It's like, if you get the key to this room, you are the man. I'm like, I just want a new pair of white socks. So if I gotta go buy them, I'm gonna go buy them. But if I don't, I'm gonna try to get in this back room and get these socks. I don't know why I wanna wear these, but they just speak a lot of volume. It's like lava. And if it wasn't if it wasn't those kind of socks, I always wanted like church socks because they always had the different designs on them and crazy stuff like that. I was buying all these church socks and they were like falling apart, like holes in the toe. My wife's like, throw those socks away. And I'm like, never, like, you will never throw these socks away. One, two, three. <laughs> hey. These are a lot of socks. <laughs> Next thing you know, it kind of blew up. Like everybody in my gym's like, oh, I'm getting some socks like easy, you know? And everybody on the team, the Rhinos is like, oh, let's all get socks. Let's get a lot of socks, you know, so. We went out to the mall and he was like, dude, you gotta get some. And I bought some and they actually feel really comfortable. I'm gonna start using them just because it's, it's comfortable and I never use long socks. You know, I'm, I don't think I'm like the sock guy, but <laughs> I mean, if I have a few, I'm gonna use them. I mean, some people want a four wheeler, some people want a flashy car. He wants socks, you know, and that's what he wants. It's like going to get a fresh haircut before you play or going to get like new cleats before you hit the field. It's like that feeling of having something new, like mm -hmm. in socks, I mean, it's 15 bucks, you know? And you know, when you get into a sport where they kind of dictate what you wear and what you can and can't wear, it's like you can always wear socks. Like, no one's gonna ever say, hey, you, you have to wear ankle socks or you have to wear these type of socks. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, this is my way of always being able to get something new. They can say, hey, you can't wear those knee sleeves, you can't wear those headbands, you can't wear those wrist straps, you can't wear those shorts or shirt, you know? Mm -hmm. They're always gonna allow you to wear what kind of socks you wanna wear. And I feel like on the grid, we all look kind of the same, but then the socks, the socks stand out. Yeah. They show your personality or something else about you that's really cool. It's something really cool now because one, we all have something in common. As simple as socks. You know, we all like cool socks. And then two, you know, we all can hang out together and go do something like buy socks. Are they are they challenging them? Game. Knowing that we were one and one going into the DC match, it was probably one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make. Guys, we have to mention that the Rhinos are without two of their beasts, Easy Muhammad and Matt Frazier. So very difficult for Ian Berger and the Rhinos. Third consecutive race won by DC and grabbing that point once again in second, the New York Rhinos. As a coach, I'm looking at this body language. New York Rhinos a little bit down right now. Yeah, Annie and Liz just kind of jogging across the line. It's critical that you sprint across nice the job, line in every single one of these races. I feel like so in the beginning, the body language probably was off, but once they get rolling, they get warm, they're ready to go. Those Rhinos are ready to move. Race! 
we all knew how capable we were, especially having Brian step up. I think that was one of the best matches to have him in. Brian Diaz going at it right now for the Rhinos. An interesting story too. He passed up a scholarship to go to Princeton to play football at Trinity University. He's a, an extremely fast and extremely strong competitor who has a good head on his shoulders. I think we were just all really determined on doing good in the second part of the race. Like, we knew that we were supposed to be able to do better, and we, well, we knew we could do better. Look at Andrew Ray from New York. Look at him cycling these thrusters on the New York side. In times of adversity, the characters really show themselves, and uh, we have quite a few leaders out there. He wants this race. He wants to win it. Andrew needs to finish this off. It's Battison against Ray, and it is Andrew Ray. Crossing the finish line first. In moments like that, that's when they, they really, really show their impact. After that match, I went up into the bathroom and threw up like six times. What is it about this that you just love so much? Uh, the movement, shoulders, bring it on. Plus, have my teammates out there. Man, this crowd's going wild. I thought I was talking like, you know, da -da -da -da. But I was just like, <laughs> it's just falling apart. Hey, coming out in, in the hole, we're fired up right now. We're going to finish this thing and get going. Congratulations. Thank you. I was dying. I thought I was answering clearly and smiling, and you know, but it was, it was not good. 